Welcome. It's the virtual studio party again. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> With Kim and Cal. Welcome aboard, everybody. That's Cal over there, <laughs> off camera. And um, it's August 1st. August. How did we get to August already? How did we get to August That's already? insane. So this is, uh, for the summer, this is the second last uh, virtual studio party before before Cal and I take our break, <clears throat> our big break um, for a bit of vacation and um, some long overdue work on aspects of our house and uh, work on our business and prepping for the fall. So um, <clears throat> yes, so there's a lot to pack in. We're gonna be taking six weeks off um, but the six weeks is not going to feel like enough as, as, as big as that sounds um, because there is so much to do. So uh, anyway, um, how are you doing? <clears throat> See, people are starting to, starting to connect, which is great. And if you're able to join the live chat, please say hi. And let us know where you are and if, you, if you're if you going to be working or playing with some supplies or project, that would be great. Um, in my title for today's party, I have listed a few options that I, uh, uh, I'm playing <laughs> with. And uh, we'll see what happens in the moment because um, things can change. Knowing you, you'll get through them all and there will still be lots of time to, you know, to figure out something else at the end. <laughs> as if, <laughs> yeah, as if that ever happens. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. We've been enjoying getting out on our patio. Oh, the weather has just been fantastic for the most part. Uh, since that heat broke. A few yeah, ago. when the yeah. heat broke. Oh, what a pleasure to be out there. And so many butterflies. Also, it's so much fun how um, people have been sharing, raising monarch caterpillars that then turn into chrysalises and then turn into butterflies. And Like our star, star. Yes, like Annie, Annie, who's normally with us on Saturday. Hopefully she can join us again today. And our friend Loretta. Um yeah, they've both been raising monarchs and releasing them. So that's been really fun to watch. <clears throat> In fact, Annie is the first one to comment. Hi, Annie. <laughs> and she says, hello, just worked on garden for almost three hours. Wow, so you need a rest. And think of layers. <laughs> three hours, that's amazing. That is a, a long time in the, in the garden trenches. It so, really is. Welcome in. I presume you have air conditioning, hopefully. And just you can literally chill a little bit and uh, yeah, hang out with us. Have a nice cool drink or something. Yes. Um, Cal, I'm going to hand you my phone so you can post an Instagram story on my account. Mm -hmm. um, use the camera to video and then post mm -hmm. it. Yeah. So um, anyway got a small group so far today it may be that the weather's so perfect mm -hmm. that people yeah, have forgotten all idea. about being indoors which fair enough but the video is here to watch afterwards anytime you like as a replay and um i i've got a few things here let's see what i've got i'm glad you're thinking about layers annie i hope that layer you posted earlier today looks great um, so I have a layer I prepared uh, a couple of days ago I guess um, I've been working in layers a lot making loose layers uh, which I think talked about and worked on last week I think um, for my contemporary mixed media class uh, but it is a, a, a way I love working and uh, working with loose layers is kind of a generating a whole bunch and then putting them together and figuring out how they work is a little different 
way of coming at it, I think, than the normal, um, the conventional approach, I guess. And so um, anyway, I painted this transparent film, uh, which is Duralar in this case, but it could be acetate, with an acrylic glaze so that you can see through it. it has kind of a satin finish which is kind of nice it cuts the glare of the uh, see how glary the film is on its own so i kind of like that satin finish and um anyway i i'm i'm going to experiment with scratching through the the paint layer to to draw <clears throat> draw designs in or something. Uh, and then I have this layer. Um, I can't remember if I worked on this during last week's virtual studio party. Someone will remember. But um, uh, it started with a photo transfer of a leaf. I'll just go close up. And you can actually see, I don't know if it'll show through my webcam, you can see a surprising amount of detail in the uh, veins that are in between the sort of mid-level veins. And um, yeah, you can actually see the tiny little ones that look like a street map in a suburban neighborhood. Uh, it's kind of funny. And uh, it's part of its appeal. And then I put this yellow green on the paper and then I printed this green leafy design on it. That's definitely not where it's going to end. That is not done yet. It doesn't feel whole. It doesn't feel integrated. So I, I my next thought is to bring some uh, water soluble graphite in and um, and start to unify it. So so that's another thing that's on my mind and plate. And then um, this stencil here, which, you know, don't you think that would be a spectacular earring? Given that I'm, I'm not inclined to wear small, small jewelry anyway, but I can imagine showing up at an, um, an art opening with earrings like this, no problem. So, uh, so stay tuned for my earring line. <laughs> um, for the bold and adventurous earring wearer. <laughs> But um, uh, thinking about, I love the way this flows. And so I was thinking about making a, a, a new custom stencil that uh, uses this kind of personality, but develops it over a whole sheet. So that's the other thing that I have on my mind. And the final thing I have on my mind, so you can see why I think I'm not going to get to all of this, because this... <laughs> is after all only a 90 minute uh, event, more or less, uh, is a little bit of gel plate printing. Uh, I have an idea that I'd like to just try and see uh, printing onto film rather than paper and just see what happens. So, so uh, while I was busy doing your Instagram, <coughs> yes, Rebecca has joined us. Oh, hi, Rebecca. Glad you could come. And I presume Kirk, but... Rebecca for sure. Yeah. And uh, Annie says, looks looks new, nice greens. And, yeah, spring greens. Yeah. And looks like jellyfish like. Yes. Yes, yeah. that could be, yeah, couldn't that's it? Great. Yeah. Pentacles. Definitely. Yeah. So and and when it's horizontal, it's I mean it was meant to evoke water. Uh, I used it in the um, altered book that was the science supplement to an encyclopedia <clears throat> but it's versatile i will use it for lots of things but i think i'll be particularly uh, excited when i've got a um a full sheet you know so as big as this one so what shall i start with why don't i start with some cutting And then uh, that'll let me warm up before I start drawing. Kirk mm -hmm. can't join us today. He's out. But he's oh, out. He well. He said to say hi. Oh, that's nice. Well, please say hi from us. 
We so appreciate that he joins you at these. Um, it's like at Cal's uh, collage jam. There's a couple, Gerda and Slade, who who usually attend yeah, together. Yeah, nice. It is nice. Um, I need some film. And I will back up the view once I've got some stuff to actually work on. Oh, I see I've left a bit of a mess from yesterday's class. I've left a whole bunch of layers sitting here in a pile that should be hanging up. Oh, well. Kim, how is that possible? I, I can't even imagine, Cal. It's so unlike me. Uh, very uncharacteristic. Very. Get to my film. There we are. Some. Rebecca says she's looking at her today. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. It, it, it's good for you to look at your layers. And it's good fun to look at your layers. In my, in my books, anyway. That's my... Rebecca answers you saying that she will pass that along to Kirk and she says she likes it when he comes too. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? I, I know what you mean, right? Okay, so I've got some of that. I'm going to also dig out my clear glossy Girolar. I hope. <laughs> got all kinds of stuff here. And of course, I don't see my clear stuff, which is what I wanted to print on. All right, I guess I won't be printing what, on um, it. Is it something you can, I can look for? Print? Well, it looks just like this, but it's not it's, matte. Okay, uh, we'll see if I can crack uh, it down. Maybe if you take these layers away, that will make it easier. These are the layers I have piled up from yesterday's class. It's not a perfect system. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was just so tired yesterday that after class that I just never got around to the, you know, clean things up, get things organized, put things away. Note to self, try and do that. Okay. Move that out of the way. I'll keep this nearby for inspiration. You know, uh, thinking about that, uh, having something nearby for inspiration, I'm always, I'm always telling people, um, suggesting or urging them that um, when you're being creative, when you're being artistic, being an artist, not to starve yourself and, um, People often talk about, oh, you know, the blank piece of paper, the blank canvas. And if that's all you're staring at, then you are, in my books, by definition, starving yourself. So um, you need to have things around you that, that put stuff in your head so that you're not just like a deer in the headlights in front of a blank something or other. And... Um, it takes me back to when I went to my first artist residency in Northern Alberta. There's Cal, by the way, <laughs> um, back in 2007. And I was going to a strange place. I was going to have a, 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 it was actually a very generous studio space. It was a big shared studio, but I got a nice big chunk of it. We all did. And, um, but it was going to be completely impersonal, completely alien and it was a two week long residency. So you don't want to spend the first 10 days just getting over the fact that it's a completely strange place. And in order to create, you, you, need, to, you need to be able to, you need to feel safe enough or comfortable enough to be able to kind of shut out extraneous stuff, especially when you're on a residency, which you go on to get concentrated time, right? To work on things. So um, 
So what I did to overcome that was I took a few completed artworks or a few things that were pertinent to what I was going to be working on, what I was thinking about at that time and um, put them up on the wall. You know, one of the first things I did, I, I moved the furniture and then I got those things up on the wall and then I could sit down and heave a sigh of relief and get going. It was amazing how effective it was. And so, um, and it isn't necessarily just artworks that do that for you, you know, like um, <clears throat> I have a little incense burner from my childhood that's a brass Buddha. And um, I think it was my mother's. And uh, anyway, I, I have it, I've, I've had it ever since. And um, I could set that up somewhere and it would be instantly, it would instantly connect me. He found it. Um, so yeah, nourishing things, stimulating things, things that connect up to the threads that are in your mind. It's, um, you know, sometimes students in our classes are anxious to throw things out. Yeah, and because they, you yeah. know, they're, they're oh well, this didn't turn out as I hoped or whatever, and yeah, it doesn't have to to necessary to be useful to, to be help useful. you yeah. continue your investigations. Yeah, whenever I'm sitting down after a break um, of any kind, and that's often right. We often seem to have breaks in our productivity or definitely our making of things. Um, I get out where I was the last time and I look through it and I I put it up or I at least have it nearby. So as a reminder, oh, right. It helps me sort of reconnect with where I was going, you know. Absolutely. Two months ago, two weeks ago, two days ago, yesterday. That's what makes it crucial, I yeah. think. Hmm. And uh, There, that's enough of the table, right? <laughs> yeah. Good. Yep. Yeah. And Annie says, haha, that would be my reason to have lots of stuff around me. So I won't starve. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's necessary. It's really it it yeah. You know, you can have a nice neat as a pin tidy environment elsewhere, but I think creativity requires you to have lots of stuff around. So even if it's contained to your one or two or seven art rooms. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, because it's it's like creativity is like a life form in a in a way, in a metaphorical way, but it had some of the the characteristics. So you think about plants and if you starve them of light and you refuse to give them water and you don't put any nu nutrients in their base whether it's soil or hydroponics or whatever then they're gonna starve and die right? and the cre your creativity is no different in that respect so and rebecca says and she's so right customizing a space works when teaching to help connect to a new space too. yes oh when we um when we teach in halliburton rebecca we set up the, the night before usually our, our week yeah. long courses and it really is about like um sort of getting the lay of the land we always rearrange the tables we always we we tell them what we think and then we change them anyway because we look at the space once and we realize and that we put up the things we need to put up and we think okay i'm gonna stand here i'm gonna talk here we're gonna cluster here and it really makes you it's it's absolutely vital. I have I have a bit of a, a challenge adapting to to spaces uh, when I'm working because I'm usually juggling masses of materials and boxes of samples and tools and materials I'm going to distribute plus the ones that I'm going to use and the demos and all that and uh, you know I take a big collapsible shelving unit to Halliburton every summer to to be able to manage some of this and um yeah I have enough trouble managing myself in my own space so I go to another space I 
uh, I have to work very hard at it. So it becomes quite amusing sometimes. Um, <laughs> it can become a, a, a humorous talking point during the class as Kim tries to figure out what, what and where <laughs> and so on. Uh, just pointing out, I'm, I'm drawing some flow lines on the film uh, just flow as lines. we go. Is that a, a, a an art term, Kim? Nope. If it is, I just coined it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, it's so much fun just drawing flow lines. I could just fill uh, pages with them. Because they're also, I'm not filling in the gaps, so, so I'm making big shapes, and that's fun. Rebecca says it helps students to claim space too. Yes. Yeah. Where are they going to put their extra things? Where yeah. are they going to dry things? Yeah. Um, what what talismans or whatever do they need to have with them? Yeah. Whenever I take a course, yeah, I go early on the first day. Oh yeah. Because I'm like, okay, it I want claims a corner I want or the something. Spot, you know. Yeah, it's usually a corner. Yeah. Yeah. He's a corner guy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I missed this before, but Annie replied to uh, Rebecca's looking at layers. She said, layers, layers, layers. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's great, Annie. Oh, I forgot. It's a long weekend. Happy long weekend, everybody. That's, right. That's, That's right. why we have the smaller group today. Uh, we have the hardcores, though. Yeah. 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 I really appreciate you being here on a long weekend and with the weather so beautiful and and if you've uh, if you've tuned in and are watching, if don't mind if you don't mind just saying hi in the chat, you don't have to participate throat if you've got your hands on something or you're kicking back but just say hi yeah it's just nice to say hi say, to people who are joining us and, yeah, and maybe tell us what you're working on or if you're or where you're from you're listening or... to a listening wow munching on something sipping on something <laughs> yeah So, you know, once I'm cutting, I won't follow these exactly, but they give me a starting point and um, something that can pull me back into an overall loose sense of structure. Well, I might have enough lines there. I'll, I'll try just in one more level of lines just to get it. You can't have too many lines. No? Is it not possible? Well, I yeah. suppose it is. But right now I'm working on something that has a lot of lines. Are so, you? Yeah. Ooh, this is fun. I can't see it. Where? I, well, it's very low contrast right now. I'll hold it up before I start cutting. And you get a sense of what's going on on this page. So, so far I am working on a couple of the things that I said I would in the title for this video. So, I'm, you know, I'm feeling pretty good about yeah, that. She delivers what she promises. <laughs> Annie says, brain is full of ideas for layers, collage prompts, and art in the garden homework, too. Maybe I can combine them all. <laughs> you could. Why not? Yeah, you know, absolutely. Like you've got they're so combining in your brain, probably. So that sounds good. Yeah, I saw it. Kim showed me uh, your your caterpillar piece. And I said, oh, that must be for my art, is, art in the garden. She said, no, it's for my course. And I'm like, <laughs> it might be for both, Kim. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which is, 
which is great. I mean, yeah, absolutely. It's all going into the same brain, right? So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, I love the fact that 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 work in progress is you telling the story of monarchs when you're raising monarchs. Like it just ties in so wonderfully to your what you're living right now. Yeah, it's kind of like um, an art journal, like a art diary or something. Yeah, like art as diary art. as yeah. art. Yeah, exactly. That's a better phrase. Be a nice day to go kayaking, don't you think, Cal? I do. Yeah. There's one problem. Don't actually have a kayak. I never know. We used to have one, but it was uh, meant for white water, so um, didn't get used as much as Cal would have liked. Yeah, hard way at all, in other words. The behavior of flow is so much fun, you know, you think about um, flowing hair, that's sort of what drawing this is reminding me of, but also, because I'm doing it vertically, but also the flow of land and sky and water, appropriately hilly, streamlined versions thereof. Annie says, still waiting for one to emerge as a butterfly, to which I said, mm. it must be suspenseful. And I asked her if she had a phone camera time-lapsing it. Yeah, that would be amazing. Which makes me think of um I don't I don't know if you know Cheryl Bailey. She's a Nielsen Park Creative Center artist and she um she has a meadow in is it Caledon yeah, that that's Caledon. in the yeah. Caledon countryside that she's been cultivating for pollinators and um for I think two summers now she's been she has a a weatherproof time-lapse camera set up so that it's getting shot 24-7 uh, in time-lapse. And she, um, it's really cool. Like she's, she also has a, she's bought a drone and has learned how to fly it so that she can fly it over. She had to get a license for it. Right. To, like to fly it. You know, to fly it over her meadow to take photographs, sort of like the pollinators would see. Yeah. The and, pollinator's eye view. And she photographs it incessantly. And sadly, like she had a, she'd been planning for about the, a month, year. A, yeah. A year, I think it was at least a year. Yeah, at least a we year. we were talking with her this time last year. Yeah. Uh, Kim was consulting with her. And she was going to have a really big show at Nielsen. Multimedia show. <laughs> over earth day yeah. it was gonna it was and she was bringing in other she had paintings and photography and video she and, was gonna bring in native plant people to come and talk and sell plant native plants and do all kinds of special programming for earth day and then covid happened yeah it's and it's i a just heartbreak, you know? yeah it was gut-wrenching for her because she'd really she'd been really pushing her limits and yeah, so it, it's going to be postponed, obviously, uh, but uh, she's going to do it. <laughs> I don't know what the new date is, but. Hey. Hopefully over Earth Day again, because yeah, Earth Day be is a perfect tie-in. So hopefully it can just be, you know, set aside and then unpacked again yeah. for, for next year. 
So Annie says, no time-lapse camera, just hoping to catch them when they break out of the casing. That would be great to have a drone for time-lapse pics. Mm -hmm. I just take the hatchery into every room I go to. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Our iPhone has time-lapse capability. Uh, I don't know what sort of phone you have. Um, but you, you might you might have... You might have a phone that has the ability you just never needed it before. You, you might find it interesting. Yeah. I mean, if it's an iPhone, there are all the different kinds of settings, you like square or rectangular or video, and time-lapse is one of them, right? Yeah. And Kim, oh, go ahead. Let's show you the flow. It's, it's very low contrast, so I don't know how well it will show up. But there, you can yeah, see the lines, can. right? Yeah. yeah. So I'm not going to cut along those lines. I'm going to cut outside of those lines. Oh, so they're, that's sort of like the middle path. They're deter yeah, right. they're determining the structure. Right. Rebecca says they always e-close, which mean which is the term for coming out. Okay. Uh, when you look away for a minute. I, I, and, <laughs> yeah, I can totally see that. Right, you're, you're exhausted from wa watching. Uh, and then you suddenly, like, you're it's like they can closed. tell, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> the energy in the room changes, yeah. and they say, Okay, now we'll make a break for it. <laughs> and he says, So true, so. yeah, <laughs> too funny. I've never heard that term before, Rebecca. E close, <clears throat> it's good to have knowledgeable people oh, on, the, yeah. on the live stream. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, excuse me. <coughs> I must have swallowed the wrong way a little bit. <coughs> okay. Breath. It's a good thing. <laughs> I need a license to drink, I think. All right. I'm going to start off with some of the shapes I like best. And the bonuses, I get this lovely <clears throat> shape. I'll toss it in my stencils and masks binder for masking when I'm gel plate printing. Maybe I'll use uh, one or more of them today. See how the time goes. <clears throat> I love how I had an idea in my head, and then the moment I started cutting, poof. Um, <laughs> so I've cut it in a way that doesn't relate to the idea I had. So, you know, this uh -oh. is the kind of thing that happens. Walking and chewing gum again. Yeah. So the stencil will probably turn out a little differently than I'd planned. <laughs> 
or envisioned, you know? Not that that ever happens in any of my other work. Thank goodness. Can you imagine? <clears throat> that really Can you imagine? I mean, how dreadful. Trying to make out where my cut is. There it is. Gosh. Yeah. It's hard to make out where the cut precisely ends or starts <clears throat> once you've made it. Hey, Gunta has joined us. Hi, Gunta. Hi, Gunta. Welcome aboard. Happy long weekend to you. Yeah. Have you been out toiling in your back 40 like uh, Annie? Annie said she was three hours busy this morning, and I can only imagine that you might have been the same. <clears throat> yeah, you knowing you. Bit or something. So I am... Going to make a little border on this stencil. <clears throat> so it all holds together. It will be the image area that way. It's a 9 by 12 sheet of Duralar. So the image area will be 8.5 by 11.5. And, and so plenty big for my 8 by 10 gel plate. And I can use it for painting as well. Good to ask, Kim, do you always make your stencils freehand? <clears throat> Uh, I often do. This one is more complex, though, so uh, you'll have missed this. I showed the, I did the pencil drawing freehand uh, on the spot, just at the earlier part of the, the beginning of the party. But that does allow you to make some adjustments as you go, because yes. you draw, and then you look at the drawing and think, oh, yeah, I changed that a little yeah. bit. And or the way the blade behaves sort of dictates that you change then. the yeah. curve. And yeah. so, yeah, I'm responsive. It gives me a basis and, and I work, but adjust, <clears throat> work with, but adjust. Um, okay. I forgot to put the border on this side. That would be a good idea though. Trying to create a balance of larger and smaller shapes in this. Because <clears throat> that will make it an interesting design. And it was my forgetting to do that uh, during that cut when I said I 
I just lost my train of thought is what I was planning to do there earlier. So I will put it in here. <laughs> Gunta says, nope, walked my pup at Queenston Heights, then picked up burgers at Richard's Meats in first Saturday barbecue since COVID. Ooh, that sounds that pretty sounds great. That sounds great. Yeah. Dropped off my burger, dropped off a burger, then came home to eat mine and veg out for a while. That sounds That's lovely. Fun. What's the status of our barbecue, Cal? Funny you should ask. No, <laughs> I'm still waiting on the, uh, the last component. The last so, part? Yeah. Gunta says, your stencils are beautiful, Kim. There, there's what it looks like so far. So yeah, uh, Gunta, I'm, I'm basing it on this, um, you know, not basing it literally, but I just wanted to expand on this, this one I'd done a couple of months ago, I guess, <clears throat> for... Uh, uh, for something I was doing in the virtual studio party. I think I made it for that because um, I wanted a water motif. And so now I have to figure out what I want to do with this. Might make a small shape here. Oops. There we go. Annie asks, stencil on Duralar? I missed it. Yeah, I'm using Duralar. I'm using the matte Duralar that I have on a pad. <clears throat> and Duralar is just a brand name from of Mylar. Yes, it's drafting film, basically what architects used to use for drawing plans, <coughs> other than drafting vellum. So this was the more permanent material, and uh, it's fantastic drawing material as well. Um, it's meant for drafting on, so it's good for drawing with um, ink and graphite and really have I met anything I didn't like drawing on this material with it's really smooth but it has a really fine tooth like a pencil on it feels really great yeah so what makes it frosted is a very fine tooth you can't feel the tooth when you go across it it feels very smooth but um, it's it's just enough to cause the frosting like an etched surface and to hold on to graphite and so on. So it's beautiful. Obviously, if you draw on it with dry materials like graphite or Conte or whatever, you need to fix, spray fix the image or it will, it will rub off. It's a very erasable material too. That was vital for drafting purposes because they would constantly rework their drawings and revise. One of the first uh, jobs I had, um, summer jobs, was <laughs> drawing diagrams for how to assemble cars. <laughs> um, I think it was for Renault, although I can't remember for sure. And so we'd get these parts and I'd have to draw them, exploded views of them. So. Yeah, you did all these very technical kind of yeah. drawings, exploded views is... That's challenging stuff, yeah. that. It wasn't actually, uh, they were, I didn't do any of those exploded views where there are thousands, like hundreds of parts in it. it I was, know, it's but, still, yeah. that's still challenging work. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you, it was very erasable, so you could, it, yeah. and uh, would take a line really precisely. So it was, it was adaptable, right? You could like, oh, I've drawn the washer in the yeah. wrong place, you can move it. It, it's it's a it's a beautiful material. Plus, I I mean I'm totally addicted to this translucency, right? So, as so I move my hand, so this is touching the mylar, and then I move it back, 
it's now like an inch or an inch and a half back from it. You can still see my hand, but it's very ghostly. And I like that. <clears throat> Maybe I'll draw a couple more or cut a couple more shapes and then take a break from this <clears throat> in order to change task, which will help my I have a little bit of an overuse injury in my hand forearm. So it's good to switch activities. What's up? So good to so uh, good to ask how I managed to get that job, and I've answered you in the comments. Uh, and Annie says, "Sounds like a fun job." Yeah, it was actually. <laughs> And it was, um, they didn't work crazy late hours, which was nice. So well, that was refreshing. <laughs> so I, worked, I worked sort of nine to five instead of nine till 11 or <laughs> midnight. In the which way. is what we worked when yeah. we worked together. Yeah. Um, Gunta has a question. Did cartoonists who worked on light boards to make motions draw on Suricarta as well? And do you know? That is not a question I'm. Uh, knowledgeable about to answer so I'm yeah, sorry and I don't even I, I I'm gonna have to look up what Suricarta is please do and please let us That's know a term I know I knew Gunter it's a city in central Java really so I think <laughs> she meant my work <laughs> okay, <laughs> right. Was it? I, I wondered whether that might be the case. Um, That's that must have been autocorrect, autocorrect that did that, yeah. and yeah. it's like <laughs> what obscure choices autocorrect. Yeah, oh, you know, for sure. you're going for a actually. <laughs> I mean, not necessarily in this case, but sometimes I'm going for an absolutely common common word, and it will come up with something so obscure. Yeah. Um, so anima animators used to work on something called cells, which were a kind of acid. They were a, a film. Yeah. Yeah. And they had, um, three, they had, cause I also did, I had an animation job for a little while, um, when I was in high school and, um, so the animation, each, each sort of frame in the movement was on its own sheet of sort of my um, acetate it was and it had they had holes along the one side so that they would always line up yeah the they're punched one. for registration yeah, yeah exactly thank you that's a succinct way of putting it <laughs> and he says suricarta sounds like japanese cherry blossoms <laughs> <laughs> sakura suricara <laughs> Gunta says i had a roommate who made cells in her room office cool yeah, one of the the jobs I had going to was the the principals, the people who really knew what they were doing, would do every fifth sort of key pose of a of a figure, and then they'd say, "Okay," and there need to be four or five transitional transitions between these two poses, and that's what was known as in betweening, and that's what yeah. I would do. So they'd have the the beginning of a thrust or a motion and the end of one, and I'd have to draw the the, the few in between so that it was smooth. That's a neat job. Yeah, it is. It was. As a student, like yeah. what a what that a that was pre computer days, so Yeah, what a great learning experience mm -hmm. that must have been. And good to says, yes, that's exactly what she did. Yeah. Yeah. And I had uh, a friend Cal also knew, although I knew him pre years before I met Cal, um, was a terrific illustrator and he would often um, colorize animators or and comic book art and so on. 
you do the color paintings that would get color separated and printed on the black line art. Mm -hmm. And good to says, I guess it's all computerized now. And yes, it is. All although, of it. although it doesn't mean that there's any shortage of labor needed because um, you just look at any animated feature length film. Look how many animators were needed. Long, like three columns of names that go on for <laughs> minutes at the end of the film. There are a lot, there's still a lot of human labor involved. Well, and just because it's not done by hand doesn't mean it doesn't require mountains of labor and mountains of knowledge. Mm -hmm. They still have to understand how movement works, how textures work, how characters work, how interactions work, expression, and all the technical stuff. Oh my God. Yeah, so it, it, it's, it's sort of, you need to know a bunch of the, the stuff that is independent of whatever technology you're using all the plus the technology and all the technology as yeah. well exactly rebecca says my friend did backgrounds for cartoons for mm -hmm. a while. yeah i was when i was younger i always found it funny that the background looked different than the characters yeah i thought, <laughs> I, I, I didn't understand at the time but i just yeah. thought well, have, they have these like black lines around them and the background looks like it's like a <laughs> yeah a, a, painting, a painting impressionistic yeah, exactly. kind of thing so that's where that stands nice. so far. Mm. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a little break right now. It looks sort of neat with the red and black coming through, say, it, doesn't it? Like, it? It's got like a silk. Be great for silk screen. Yeah. So um, yeah, I'm gonna switch to something. There's there's a bit of a lot of resistance in the as I'm cutting. So I'm gonna do something that has less resistance now. Let's see what that could be. So I won't do the scratching right now because that's also resistance. So maybe I'll get out the water-soluble graphite. Gunta says, like architects, animators would have to learn technology and have a huge learning curve to adapt. And yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And she says of your cut, gorgeous. Thank you. Yeah, designers also have to learn mountains of software on top of actually learning design, which Cal spent four years studying at the college level with no, with zero technology training. So, you know, when um, when there are graphic design programs that are only like two years long. And included in that are learning like eight different programs. You have to ask yourself, what was it Cal was learning in four years, genuinely, um, that these people, these students are clearly missing out on? Good to say, graphic artists too, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, because graphic designers are, are now, um, you know, we're old, so it wasn't like this when we were young designers, but not only do they need to know page layout software, um, Photoshop, vector-based illustration software, um, animation, not at an animator's level, but in order to animate graphics, uh, web design. Um, there are facets to web design. And, um, and really, if you don't know some video stuff, you're limiting yourself, right? Yeah, and then there are all the niches, like you can go into interface design, where yeah. you can design apps and programs and... <laughs> yeah. I mean, at coding, uh, yeah. So if you're gonna learn web design, then you better learn HTML and how to use that so that you can customize things. But you also have to learn, oh, it just goes on and on, right? So the problem is, you know, software changes, but design, uh, the ability to think well in design terms 
can move between technologies, between platforms, between everything. Um, and if you're shortchanged on that part of your education in order to learn the technology, that's gonna it's gonna be hard on you out in the field. Rebecca says some of the software is getting easier now, though, and it is true. It, the interfaces. Some of the software is, yeah. but I wouldn't describe Illustrator or Photoshop as easy. <laughs> no, I mean, they're in, in intensely know, capable. And Premiere Pro. And so you have to, yes, you can use simpler versions of software to accomplish a certain, a more limited set of things. Yeah. Gunta says it's a whole new world. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, Gunta, I, I adopted computer technology, my first Mac, for design, for my first design business um, in 1986 and uh, trained. I got hired by a publishing firm a couple of years later because they had purchased a whole studio full of incredible amazing equipment, spent a huge sum of money and they'd paid for training, but the designers were, were not, were afraid of it. They were not using it. And so um, the manager brought me in as someone who was already up to speed and would produce work that way. And then would also help yeah. further train everybody. And then I ended up training a whole, I trained Cal. I ended up training a whole lot of people in the whole company yeah. uh, how to use this stuff. And then I became tech support, <laughs> all yeah. on top of my design job. So, yeah. yeah. Rebecca answers, no, but something like Procreate is fairly intuitive, especially yeah. if you already know Photoshop. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and there are quite a few yeah. now sort of, um, I was going to use the term lesser poor cousins, but well, they're you know, limit. They're more they, limited. They have, they have limits, but yeah. they, but some, but some they have don't purposes. Require all of them. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the Lord knows that, uh, Adobe products with their, Oh yeah, absolutely. Monthly charges are not within everyone's reach. So no, no. Gunta says, wow, I'm 1998 as a college prof. It was the first year we were asked to make our course outlines and exams by computer. Wow. Well, I, you know, when I got my first Mac, this is typical me. So um, I, oh, there's so many things I could unpack about this, but I'll keep it simple. The, um, I had a job coming up, a project I'd been hired to do. And the whole idea was that that was going to be my, kind of my test project, but it was a real thing. It wasn't a test. It was gonna be a real, it was like a mini newspaper. And um, I was gonna have to go from, this is my very first computer ever I touched a pet computer. My father had one, but I never got into it. And um, learning this whole new way of working, you know, page layout software. This was PageMaker version 1.0, <laughs> maybe 1.1. And um, it was the defining software of the category called desktop publishing. So you know, literally we'd never seen anything like it and um, except in demos recently. And uh, I had to go from that, like, hello, this is a computer <laughs> to a 16 page newspaper laid out in two weeks. Those are the days when I had a good brain such a good brain. I was so young. <laughs> My brain's been through so much since then. Um, says, Yikes. Yeah, yeah. But it, it you know, it, um, well, you it's teach, highly motivating. Did you teach it to yourself without, or was that Quark without the manual? No, Quark, I had, I 
started to learn without the manual, but then I had the benefit of the manual at Key Publishers. Uh, Page Maker, I couldn't, I couldn't afford to get the manual, so I um, just had to learn it. I, I got to borrow someone's manual for a weekend, but I couldn't photocopy it. It was over a thousand pages, the manual, right? So I couldn't photocopy it. And uh, so I just kind of looked for key parts so that I could get going. <laughs> you got to admit, that's typical me, right? That is typical of you. And just this, um, I don't know where I get this blind faith that I'll just, I'll figure it out. <laughs> well, first of all, it's, it's youth. Yes. And, and then, and now it's become like a self fulfilling prophecy, right? Yeah. Because you, look I spend at, my life you, just figuring you things look out. At anything and think, <laughs> surely I can just like, I can just figure this in out and start figuring yeah. it out. And, and, <laughs> and then it's like, okay, but if someone will pay me, then I'll, to do this, then I'll. Well, then it's very motivating, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> if you're paid. <laughs> and he says, learning on the job is always the best way. And then you go back and learn it properly afterwards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. You fill in the gaps and you say, oh man, if only I'd known that, that would have been awesome. <laughs> How much easier that would have been. Uh, but it's so true, uh, Rebecca, what you're saying about the, the software now it's a mark of the sophistication of of the thinking around interface and interfaces and programming and and also of the technology you know a program like procreate on an ipad like the whole experience with the P apple pencil like the whole experience is just so much at a different level than it was back then. I mean, God, people, there were people there who were excited about DOS back then, right? Microsoft DOS, the most horrible interface ever. It was basically like, if you wanted to be a programmer, that was a great interface. <laughs> To, to use as your computer. I never, in the early days, I just thought computer, computer and art will never meet. Yeah, Cal, you know? Cal was pretty anti-computer. But then as soon as someone showed me an Apple graphical interface and you could see things. Yeah. And you could actually control the things that I love to control. Well, and he could see what I could do on the computer. Yeah, and that, yeah. so, you know, that thing Soul. of right. teeth, don't teach a man to. Don't give him a, like give a man a fish and he'll eat for a day. Teach him um, a love of the sea, or uh, yeah, something yeah. like that. Or yeah, don't don't teach him how to build a, a boat. Teach him a love of the sea if you need him yeah. to build a boat. Something like yeah, that. yeah, something like yeah. that. Yeah. We're I'm butchering a yeah, uh, well yeah. known. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the fish the, the fish thing is a red herring. If anyone remembers <laughs> good to the know actual all about thing. Red herrings. She uh, Does she? a piece on red hair. Did she? Yeah. Oh, good. Annie says, ha, 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 dots, line commands. Oh, <laughs> seriously, like just to, I don't know, eject a floppy disk, you know, Mac, oh, I drag it to the trash. MS-DOS, oh, you have to learn this little sequence with little colons and slashes and <laughs> just crazy. And line commands, yeah. yeah. Rebecca says, I remember my dad bringing home a really early personal computer without a monitor. It looked like an electro <laughs> electronic typewriter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, and Rebecca has set us straight on the, uh, on the, on the, on the fish thing. Yeah, yes. thank you, Rebecca. Yeah. Wasn't You're... the one I meant, but that is how it's supposed to go, Rebecca. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, I'm using the water-soluble graphite just to... <laughs> Um, to extend the main vein lines to fill the page. That's my starting point. And um, just using the 2B, it seems to be dark enough. I have a 6B and a 9B in the same uh, graphite stick. This is um, 
Lyra water soluble. says now many courses are online and exams are online. I would not be able to teach these days. <laughs> You'd need training, that's all. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's just a different delivery method. That's a technical skill. You know, you can have technical skills but not know how to teach, in which case and and to assess and so on. So you know, it's just a question of which which end you come at it from. We so. taught in some of the programs that uh, at Halliburton that required us to use this school's uh, software desire to learn. <laughs> yeah, so-called desire to learn. That could and, kill the desire to learn in anybody. And it had... It had a lot of useful capabilities, but boy, the interface was oh, brutal. Oh, it was crap interface. Like they clearly had had not hired any anyone to help with the to actually design the interface as a designer. It was it was a programmer's interface, you know. Gunta is signing off, so we'll see you later. Okay. Gunta, she says, so I can get my laundry done and hung up while the sun is out. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Well, thanks Save. so much for joining us. Yeah, saving the planet little by little by letting the sun do the work. Thank you. Yeah, our backyard's so shady. We we <laughs> actually wouldn't be able to dry our clothes very well. They'd, they'd grow a bit of mold, I think. <laughs> see you later. Yeah. It's amazing looking back at those times, actually, when all of that was so new. And here I am, you know, talking to you via my laptop over the internet. My God. Yeah. I, I used to be, was anyone else here a real fan of Star Trek? Um, I grew up just loving that. My dad and I used to watch it. I'm, I'm thinking it was on Saturdays and uh, and I remember just being amazed at all the technological things they had had <laughs> fictionally and uh, and now look at us and he says yes watch Star Trek every weekend yeah <laughs> it was great wasn't it the thing I, I loved about Star Trek was you the the sets were so corny and flimsy and, and, and pathetic yeah but it didn't matter because the stories were really good exactly really good, good right? storytelling I mean, overcomes it, it all it's kind of like when you have really great actors and you've given them a couple of styrofoam blocks to put on stage you know yeah. and they use those to oops i've blobbed cal i've done quick the dreaded paper blob quick paper towel because i didn't blot after dipping in that's water be the um for the next lines to come out. Well, that's where it was supposed to. Right. I guess I'll just thicken up the vein there a bit. Yeah, there exactly. we go. And he says, low tech is more fun. <laughs> yeah, sometimes their, set, their sets didn't seem much above what, what we used to do in our school <laughs> place. <laughs> but that's fine. Becca says, I agree. Yeah. I also, it was such an optimistic time, the 60s, and um, and the fact that the crew on the bridge was multi-ethnic, was um, in my mixed ethnicity household, was mm -hmm. felt familiar, felt right to me. I, I seem to recall our, our friend uh, Val, who's Chinese, said that Gene Roddenberry, that was one of his 
missions was to be yeah lead the way as far as um putting women and minorities in in role important roles responsible roles yeah, yeah. which is great yeah and it and i remember um you know the civil rights movement was going on and she thought oh what am i doing being on this sci-fi show i should be out marching or whatever and that martin luther king told her wow that yeah. the work she was doing was hugely important well and it was yeah absolutely for, like look at the like march for a day <laughs> there you mix mix some metaphors march for a day or or be on television on endless reruns yes to, modeling you know, it yeah, modeling exactly, what's exactly. possible and he says, yes, all shades of humans slash aliens. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It, was, it had a beautiful message that I really internalized as a child. And um, imagine my disappointment when I discovered that not everybody else had internalized that. But obviously, many did. Thankfully. So we got some Lee fronds in the background and then some veins right up close in there. So we're so close to them, they're running off the page in all directions. I love that. Well, thank you. Nice, nice scale changes. I'm glad you like that. So just have a few more to draw and then I'll share it with you guys. Um, there you can sort of see it a little bit. It's already looking better because I've got the extension from the leaf transfer. Mm -hmm. I did it again. Blot. You could make a song about that. About blotting? No, about whoops, I did it again. <laughs> oh, wait. Might have been done before. That didn't seem to be wet enough. <laughs> it's a delicate balance, apparently. When the graphite's wet, it um, gets absorbed by the paper fibers, in addition to it making a different kind of mark and um, becoming darker. Well, even though it probably doesn't do this, I'm going to switch the way the vein grows here. Don't be restrained by reality. Heck no. <laughs> that sounds pretty funny, doesn't it? Hell no. <laughs> reality is mere putty in our hands. Gosh, non. I have the feeling that Philippa's out there, but she's just not saying anything. It's possible. You are, aren't you, Philippa? <laughs> it's possible, because there are some people who haven't spoken. Now, some of them may not, including Philippa, might not have access to the chat That's right. where she's... they are. So, Enzo has taken over the computer. Yeah. Actually, He's been known to. And he says, fortuitous, a friend dropped off a set of water-soluble graphite pencils yesterday. You're kidding. Fun to use them. That's, That's hilarious. Perfect. <laughs> it's like it's like they knew. Yeah, they did. It's well, nice. I love water-soluble graphite. And uh, I particularly love the sticks, but I also really enjoy the pencils. Um, and have used, I, I travel with them. That uh, Those in a water brush because I find that really nice to work with. So 
I'll give you a, a little peek on how yeah. these veins are looking. Yeah, that's great. So you see how before it looked more disjointed. It's I'm not saying that that big rectangle doesn't still have a kind of maybe slightly oppressive presence, but it's uh, it's improving. No, but as soon as your eye can follow a line from within it to beyond it, it mm -hmm. does this interesting game, doesn't it? Yeah. So I think I'm going to get a bit of a bit of ink here. Got some um, some vivid lime green and some thalocyanine green blue shade. And, and uh, oh, there they are. I got a clean one. Yeah, it's good to have a clean palette or more or less clean anyway. What do you use to cleanse your palate? <laughs> Speaking of cleansing my palate, this is a great time for a drink. <laughs> yeah, so in this little case, it's a great little case, by the way, it's frosted plastic. It has the hinges. Um, it's one of those plastic hinges, but it's more substantial than a lot of these pencil cases I buy. And so where did you get It's from thing? Muji. Oh, yes. So if you have access to a Muji, there's one in Square One. There, there are numerous. There's one downtown at Atrium on Bay. Um, it, they're terrific. Anyway, I put like my water brush in there your koi uh, water brush by sakura right and i've got a little muji eraser here and a little pe little pencil sharpener <laughs> and my graphite sticks and a couple of charcoal pencils and this is one of my um it's a derwent water soluble this is one of those pencils that has no wood it's all the graphite oh nice so the whole thickness is the graphite so it can it it can be if i had to i could just take a set of these instead of these if i needed to save space but i do love how substantial these are which makes them kind of versatile Little little uh, boxes and containers for supplies and tools are, um, well, they become a hobby, <laughs> finding, finding good ones, don't you find? It's more than just a hobby with you, Kim. Well, let's just say I take my hobbies pretty seriously sometimes. <laughs> what would people find if they went to your Pinterest page? Hmm. Tens of thousands of pins. Yes, yeah, so if you're on Pinterest, let's look for Kim Lee Co. And uh, I have very little in terms of my own artwork up there, which is, you know, how how's that for hopeless marketing? Um, but I use Pinterest as a way to do research. And, uh, and sometimes it's the only expression of some of my hobbies that I can get to. So because I, uh, art is my work, it's, it's my love, but it's my work. And so I do need hobbies outside of that. And, um, but I have very little time or energy for them. And it seems to me you had a, uh, you have a pretty substantial kits. Yes, I do have a kits board. Exactly. Cause I love a good kit. Yeah. I like making them. I like buying them. I like just slobbering over them. <laughs> I know it's it's a. Uh... Anybody else here like kit? Like a nice kit? 
Well, Rebecca says, actually, I have yeah. a little metal one from Muji that is pretty awesome. Oh, like, lovely. Yeah. 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 Muji, Muji has some really lovely, uh, first of all, stationary supplies. Really, really good for that. I want to go and get some, um, they have some very attractive cardboard binders. So paper-based binders with metal hardware, obviously, and metal trim. But because um, I'm tired of buying plastic ones, I used to be able to choose between, you know, if I'm just buying a bunch of one inch ones for teaching, I used to be able to choose between um, inexpensive plastic ones and inexpensive paper ones. And now I find it very hard to find the paper ones. But Muji, I know, has some really nice ones. So, uh, But I haven't, I've, I haven't been to Muji in ages, so I'm... I'm going to save up like one of my one of my adventurous trips out into the world is going to be to a Muji. So Kim has a a kits board that has 496 pins. That's a small board then. Yeah, and she has an Altoids tin project which involves yeah. hacks for Altoid tins. Well, in creative projects, yeah. like every kind of project you could imagine. 303 pins. So. Yeah. And I have a quite a collection of Altoids tins. So, you know, because I want to make things for them. I have made a few things. I made my um, our niece, uh, what's called an everyday carry kit. So, you know, she's an urban young woman and... Uh, so I put things in there that she would need as an an urban woman. So Annie says, wow, serious collections. And yes, Annie, if you're going to Kim's Pinterest page, pack a lunch. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think the page as a whole has tens of thousands of posts or pins, doesn't it? I should say in the... I seem to recall that Thanks. it has. Should say. Yeah, it should say. So there's that lime green, vivid lime green ink. And I'm going to throw a bit of this phthalo green ink in it. Just to tune it. Like maybe just one drop. I'll put a bit more yellow lime in it. Sorry, I hope you can hear me. I, I realized I was <laughs> almost muttering there. <laughs> I've just gotten so comfortable. I, it's like I'm in my <laughs> studio without being webcasting. Okay. So I'm just going to extend some of the green from the transfer out. Annie says, if anyone is in Montreal, there's a great stationery stall called Nota Bene. With great oh. products from Germany and Japan. Oh, I, I love it already. Mm. Easy to drop a whole paycheck there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Good stationery stores, like good bookstores. Yeah. And Rebecca, I'm not sure in response to what exactly, but she says, you are good. Oh, <laughs> well, maybe about the Pinterest yeah. board having so many. <laughs> yes, I imagine so, because it is it is a jaw-dropping array of... I, I'm amazed how many pins there are. Now, when I think about it, when I think about how many sessions I've had pinning and how many pins I will, well, during some sessions in particular I have done. I don't do, I don't tend to do things by halves. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is going to be interesting. I might do alternate areas like this. 
I always like to find a structure that I can follow to make to make a piece have some internal logic. Um, so let's see. Yeah, I think this is going to going to do something nice for this. There. But you can see what's happening. And I'll layer onto that as well once it's dry. I'll add to that. I'll add to that with, so I'll bring some uh, water-soluble graphite in again. To modify the green and extend and darken it in places. If things have gone really quiet over here, it's because I'm on the Nota Bene website. Cal's checking it out there, Annie. I, we may not hear from them for a mm -hmm. while. I used to love looking at first the uh, print catalogs and then the website for Levenger in the United States, which um, has some amazing products for people who read and write and like books and like pens and like great organizers and so on. I think it's possible my first husband got me onto that because I think he was a big fan. I'm going to make it, I'm adding a little water to make it less, less intense, especially since I have that, um, the leaf the foliage kind of prints that I put on here. I want to keep them still somewhat visible. I don't want to want to totally obscure them. I'm going to obviously knock back their contrast because I'm deepening the space around them. Rebecca says there is a great stationery slash art supply store in Seoul that I love to wander around. Oh, oh God. Lucky you. Yeah. Dying to go to Seoul. Well, South Korea, you know, there's more other parts of it I want to see too, but so uh, when did you go? Was it a, was it a, a like a vacation or did you teach English there for a while or that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to teach English <laughs> in South Korea for a while. Annie says suitcase home would be overweight. LOL. <laughs> <laughs> Annie also says something that is right up your alley, Kim. Ah. She says, I got a pen like that one that went up to either the moon or space station as a gift for my hubby. It can write upside down. Kim has at least two or three of those. Well, right? I lost my bullet space pen, I think, in the move to here, which, you know, kill me now, right? Beautiful. 
Um, but I have, um, I think a couple of others that are, uh, that was the classic Fisher space pen. Whereas I have a couple of others that can do similar things that aren't that. Aren't the, uh, the official They one. aren't the official one, yeah. yeah. Rebecca says she taught English there for a year. Oh, good for you. Yeah. I'm a little envious. I hope you really enjoyed it. Was it really demanding? Rebecca says small town, less than a million. Oh, wow. Kang Nung and then Busan for a bit. Right. Cool. There. That's good. Yeah, starting to come together now. What's nice is the drying times give you a chance to sit back and, and look and contemplate your next move. That's sort of, for me, part of the zen of, of studio. Rebecca says, it was great. Taught mostly adults, so had to make my own textbook, etc. Oh, you, so you had a little more uh, leeway and more responsibility yeah. too, in some ways, rather than having just the, uh, having to learn the curriculum. I really like teaching adults like that. I admire people who can teach children, but it's not my Kappa. métier. I don't have the energy for it now. If I had the energy, that could change a bit. What? So Rebecca says, so as far as it was earlier, she said it was great. And then she said, until I got pneumonia and passed out in a Japanese airport during SARS. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, oh my you poor God, thing. That's Rebecca. Wow, what horrible timing for you to have pneumonia yeah. in every respect. The fact that you're yeah, traveling. Never, never a good time to get pneumonia. And, uh, and during SARS, like, oh, man. And he says, glad you're okay, Rebecca. Yeah. Yeah. Glad you got through that. I've heard really good things about Japanese people if, you're, uh, if you need help that they are very helpful. So I, I hope, I mean, maybe you were traveling with someone in which case they could help you, but hopefully you got the help, help you needed. Okay. Now I'm going to get some, I can work in some of the gaps here. Just laying in some of the, uh, with sort of small dense scribble marks, some of the 2B water soluble graphite. Dry. So this, the part of the paper I'm on is dry. The graphite itself is dry. We'll see what happens. Rebecca says, I was so sick, lucky to be in Japan. Korean airline attendant took me to a doctor in the airport. Oh, good. And Annie says, my nephew says Japan is the cleanest and safest place. Yeah. Sometimes he'd be passed out drunk <laughs> and wake up with all his belongings still. Uh, I've heard that. Yeah. I've heard the only thing you have to watch out for is uh, make sure you buy a cheap umbrella because they have racks or stands you put your umbrella in and you go into the restaurant or the building or whatever. And um, it's the one thing that, that uh, Japanese people will well, walk off we'll with. Upgrade with. Like, <laughs> oh, look at that nice umbrella. <laughs> um, you know, in an otherwise admirably um, considerate society in terms of things like that. Rebecca says, and some man drove me to a hospital and checked me in. Oh, my God. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, man, that 
When I went out for um, that residency I told you about in 2007, I, um, I got sick and I had already had a case of pneumonia eight or nine months before. And there was another artist there, a wonderful artist. Um, her name's Anne Manuel. Um, she lives in New Brunswick now. She's from Newfoundland, though, with all the characteristic gift of the gab and, and of humor. But she has had, in her life, she'd had loads of pneumonia. And so she was became a runner to keep her lungs in as good condition as possible. I don't think she'll mind me telling you that. Um, anyway, follow her on Instagram. She does brilliant work. Um, and um, uh, anyway, she was really worried about me. And so one of the lovely ladies who was participating in the residency, but was a local, um, it was located in Grand Prairie, Alberta, um, took me to a doctor's office and sat with me. It was, you know, it was classic a waiting time in a doctor's office like I don't know how long we were there especially because I was a, a drop-in patient right so he had to fit me in whenever he could um, but she sat she drove me there she sat the whole time and was just incredibly kind you know I, I always remember her fondly because of that wonderful act of kindness at a time, you know, you're not at home. You don't, you can't just go to your normal doctor. You don't, you don't know your way around. It's just means so much. And you, Rebecca, you were, you don't know the language. <laughs> There's so much, right? Yeah. No, there's so there's a, so much good in the world. Yeah, it's really good to remind ourselves of that. Yeah. It's not what seems to get encouraged enough, but it's uh, it's definitely there. Rebecca says to Annie that makes sense in terms of her nephew. Um, makes sense in Korea. People will put you on some cardboard out of the way or something if you're passed out in the street. <laughs> yeah. It is quite a different attitude towards public drunkenness in Japan and Korea, right? Like it's just people get drunk and everyone acknowledges it and doesn't have some puritanical story around it. And so they don't get harassed. Like here, traditionally, drunks get harassed, like peaceful drunks get harassed by police, right? And yeah, God forbid you're a minority. Yeah. Never mind being a homeless person and all that. But, you know, just because you're drunk in the street doesn't mean you're homeless. But regardless of that, why should you, you you're not being a criminal if you're not bothering anybody. Didn't we read somewhere that in Tokyo or maybe just Japan in general, if they do, if police do encounter someone who's a belligerent drunk, what they do is they take a futon and, and they, they roll them they up roll in them it. up in it and take them to the station yeah. that way. They can't hurt themselves. They can't. They can't hurt, hurt the anybody else. Yeah, and then they. And then they put them in 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 the cell to yeah. sleep it off. Yeah. Oh, uh, which I just think, what a difference to a, a militarized approach. Yeah, eh? exactly. Yeah. Rebecca says yes. Everyone in Japan was so nice. They assigned me a nurse who knew a bit of English and Aww. eventually found a book with medical questions in English and Japanese. Just think of the, you know, someone says, oh, I'll find something. And they're off researching where they can get such a book. Like what a, yeah. There's a lot to commend a culture like that. To which Annie says that is amazing. Rebecca, yeah. and I agree. And Rebecca says it's often the cops who move you aside. <laughs> Just get you onto your little cardboard. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And, and isn't that something? Like they get you on a cardboard because it's better to be on a cardboard. 
even that tiny bit of insulation from the ground, you know, it's, You're gonna it's be healthier. You might as well not have, have just slightly fewer aches and pains in the morning. Yeah, not get hypothermia maybe yeah, even exactly. because of that. And yeah, that's beautiful. Oh, I think I know what I want to do over there. Kirk was in Korea and came to visit me in hospital both weekends I was there. Oh. So were you were you together at that time or was this pre pre coupled them? I mean, you don't have to share that if you don't want to. I'm just, I'm just thinking about, you know, he was in Korea, so that's neat. But you weren't there necessarily as a couple. What a romantic thing it would be if it, uh, if it blossomed in those circumstances. They were dating. Okay. Yeah. That's lovely. It is 3.41. Is it really? Jeez. Oh, I ask that every single time. It's like predictable as clockwork. Well, you'll notice I didn't even... That I'll have no now, idea. So. Okay, well, let me get this little bit. Rebecca says, I've just gone to Japan for 24 hours to get a new visa. Oh, jeez. And then all that happened. Yeah. Wow. Huh. I feel like I, I started with one problem and now I've got, and when I say problem, I don't mean uh, a bad thing. A problem is in a problem to chew nice on. It's meaty problem. Yeah. yeah. Um, and now I've got this whole other different set of problems that it's going to be fun figuring out. So let me get a white backer for this so that it will show up better. There we are. There we go. So doesn't it feel like this whole upper area now is starting to, I don't know, form into something, mm -hmm. make more sense. Um, you see doing this over here, it's now, I've just started the process of making that rectangle less of an issue. So Annie has the $10,000 question. She says, Kim, yeah. What will you do with that layer? <laughs> oh, I'm not going to worry about that yet, but it's a good question. I don't know. It kind of depends on how this turns out. Um, you know, when I see what it is, when it's done or further I've had a chance to process it more as it's further along, um, it will, ideas will suggest themselves. And um, I can imagine, so on Friday, we did a black and white lay, base layer, under layer, maybe. And uh, so I could imagine dreaming up maybe a black and white under layer that could be seen through this a little bit. I could make it more transparent with medium. Um, I could make more of them and then put them together in different ways. So I'm not sure. Yeah. And that's, I like being there. I like being in the place where every, everything's full of possibilities and nothing set in stone yet. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to keep looking at it, keep adding to it until I'm, I feel like it's arrived somewhere that's interesting. 
and um, and see what occurs to me. Yeah. So thinking about layers, right? Um, like, where's that? Where's that thing? That there it is. Where's so, that thing? Well, I just I think this might be fun. Like, let's just see what happens if I lay. I, I'm going to wish I had more hands, but thinking <laughs> about layers. I'll ask you in a second, Danny. You know, what happens when I do things like that? A little bit of blue is nice because there's green and there's yellow green and then some blue green and there's nice too. Yeah. What happens if I oh put one of the uh, stencils in front of that? Oh, yeah, that's pretty fun right there. Right? <laughs> she says yes. Nice layers. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> They're gorgeous. Well, here's a wacky thing. Look at what you've started here, Andy. <laughs> you you with your good questions. <laughs> I've just pulled this out of the tub of water because I used this to make the prints that are on there. That's a piece of fun foam, right? That yeah, it's cut? a piece of fun foam that I cut. So. I don't have like a... So this is the side that has the green ink. Yep, that's kind of fun. You know, so yep. now we've got a dimensional layer, yep. but there's also, also the, uh, a completely different color could be brought into the little complementary play with the yeah. green and then sort of right. Mm. And there is something beautiful about having dimension. And you see the relationship between the print and the yeah like, exactly. Printed, so that's fun. So I'd have to be willing to you know sacrifice this to to the piece, but you know if it's worth it, it's worth it. So exactly. so Annie had another question. Okay, she said not to change the subject, <laughs> but what happened to the altered book? Did I miss the cover being changed? <laughs> no, I just as I just decided I wanted to work on this today um not the altered book but the altered book still needs to be finished so it still has i need to glue together some pages and there's still a bunch of pages to go but it is most of the way through and i need to complete the covers so one of the delays in the cover is i need to find and that is not as easy as that sounds um i have a collection of some some transparencies that are colored transparencies, just a, a single color each. And um, I wanna find one, the red one in particular. And um, I don't remember where I put them. <laughs> so um, I, uh, the last time I remember using them specifically was when I taught a photography class. I have a suspicion that I know where that is, Ooh. but I'm not positive. Well, you know, if, I mean, uh, extra points to him if uh, if he remembers where it is. But um, yeah, they they can be used as f photo gels uh, to color the light when you're doing photography, and that's why I bought them. But um, I want to use them in mixed media the way I might use this layer, right? Completely different, you know. I've I've colorized this one by painting it with a transparent glaze but it has the brush marks which is kind of interesting and I can scratch the paint off whereas that colored colored acetate is just imbued with the color so <clears throat> um, but I think um, I haven't worked with that per se in a mixed media piece and I I think it'll do some interesting things once I drill holes in my cover so Maybe, maybe um, we have one more virtual studio party this summer before Cal and I take our big break 
for a bit of vacation, a bit of, oh my God, we've been neglecting the garden and house for years. Let's mm -hmm. do a few things. And then um, we have some some business things to to do. Um, hopefully we'll be releasing something quite new in the fall. So stay tuned and, uh, and preparing for the fall as well. So um, um, also uh, uh, we will be figuring out our fall in the next couple of days, next few days. And uh, so we'll be able to share something about that later next week. What to expect course wise yeah and I mean, so i know a bunch of mine but I, not all of them if so. you're in one of our courses we'll share it in in that and um we'll share it in the virtual studio party too and get it up on the website and all the usual stuff but man you know just <laughs> trying to keep up with everything <laughs> And he says, looking forward to it all. Sounds like a packed quote unquote vacation. Yeah, yeah. seriously, yeah. right? And it and we're gonna take six weeks, which sounds like a lot, but because it's not a six weeks vacation, it's a six week, yeah, we'll we'll we're gonna do Should like a week first. of of camping and then the rest is gonna be full. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna try and rest too. Like we'll take it in doses, but Anyway, lots and lots to do, including uh, dip, dipping our toe into e-commerce. I'm hoping this fall we'll have e-commerce on our website. So, um, yeah, that's lots to do. So, anyway, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your long weekend in the garden or wherever, on your patio, whatever you're whatever you have available on your balcony. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I hope we get some, it's nice weather today. I hope it stays nice. I heard, I heard a rumor of some thunder showers. So yeah. Rebecca says, make sure you take some time for yourself. Yeah. And it doesn't say Kim, but I'm going to say Kim. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yeah, uh, duly noted. Uh, I'll, I'll try. I need rem I need reminding. It's absolutely we both, true. We both do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I'll uh, work on that too. <laughs> uh, thank you, Annie. Annie says, "Have a great long weekend too. Always Aww. fun to tune in. Thank you both. You're very thank welcome, you. Annie. Thank you for such a pleasure yeah. to have you guys here. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. And uh, yeah, and we'll uh, we'll very likely have a bigger crowd for the next weeks when it won't be a long weekend and it will be our last one before the break and uh, I'll miss it. But I, I also during the break, I just need that as you can imagine the time, time and energy to direct it in some different ways. So anyway, I'll see you soon and uh, take care. Yeah. See you later. Bye-bye. Hugs. <laughs>